All right, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com and there is a free trial for 14 days. It comes with education. You get the Bookmap educational course uh, and you get uh, access to the advanced order flow webinars, which uh, start in about a half hour and uh, other resources as well. Uh, if you need any help, you can always reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, the, uh, uh, let me show you where you can find that. Uh, let's just go through the website really quickly here. Uh, here's the home page. Click on explore. There's an intro video and then just uh, scrolling through here, just uh, information about bookmap, um, signing up for the webinar, uh, link to a trial, bookmap for equities. Uh, for those of you uh, trading equities or futures, uh, there is this uh advantage here uh, with the NASDAQ total view. It's a really nice data feed. Uh, we're not the data provider. Uh, we just uh, partnered with somebody to provide it. Uh, so we have a book map for equities. If you want to take a look at one, let me know. Uh, we can do that. I've got uh, plenty here lined up. Uh, connectivity, you will need a data provider. Okay, One of these to connect book map to the live markets. We're, we're a platform. Uh, we're not a data provider. All right. Uh, a little bit further down, pricing. Okay, so this is where you can find Bookmap for the 14-day trial. Uh, you can see there's um, some different options here. There's really only one version of Bookmap. It's Bookmap Basic. Okay, uh, it's 49 per month. Is billed quarterly. All right, and then there's the Bookmap Advanced. And the difference between these two are these other features. Uh, one, and this is an important one, is the ability to trade right from the chart. Uh, you therefore can uh, use the bookmap liquidity uh, heat map to uh, manage your trades and your and your entries and exits. So, for example, if uh, you see um, on the bid that uh, there's a lot of interest to buy at a specific area and you're trying to get into the market, well, maybe you want to place your limit orders just above uh, a tick or two above some of that high liquidity to guarantee that uh, or higher probability that you're going to get filled. Okay. Or you can hide them behind stops, for example, uh, or your, I'm sorry, hide your stops behind that high liquidity. Okay. Uh, and then these other proprietary indicators that we put together um, that are very specific to order flow. Okay. Large lot tracker, uh, identifying larger players, iceberg detector, again, identifying larger players uh, with hidden liquidity, uh, some balances in the order book and the volume. Um, and a correlation tracker. Okay, quants, uh, you might have your own very specific needs, like connecting your own data, your own proprietary indicators, etc. So just click here to learn more and we can help you out. Uh, you can follow us here on Twitter, okay, uh, at bookmap underscore pro, okay, to get the most information, most updated information here. Uh, and you'll, there's all sorts of stuff here. So, uh, uh, anyway, that's uh, that's our Twitter and our YouTube page. Okay, uh, many of the resources are here, uh, and um, you can start off with some of the intro videos, and then maybe uh, start with a few of the features and components to understand what Bookmap is and how to use it. Uh, and then these order flow video snippets. Okay, these go through the order flow phenomena that Bookmap um, visualizes and uncovers. Okay, they're very concise, but this is the kind of content that we go through in detail in the advanced order flow webinars uh, that uh, that start in about uh, 25 minutes. Okay, uh, the reason we've separated these uh, these two out, uh, these two different webinars, um, those that are uh, in trial or uh, current customers, they're they've moved beyond the basics about the platform. Okay, so uh, if 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 you guys do have, and there are a lot of um, uh, traders that come in here that uh, are current customers, uh, and they're here to ask uh, more about the uh, the platform, okay, and uh, understand some of the uh, details, and that's what we're that's what we're here for. All right, so um, let's uh, let's take a look at Bookmap. Um, we'll uh, let's take a quick look at the Nasdaq here. It's back up at the top of the range. Yeah, we'll take a look at the Nasdaq. I think. Um, and uh, what's what's shaking over there? It's had had a nice move here to the upside. OK, 
okay? Uh, and um, uh, let's see here, there's something I wanna go over quickly and that is the um, volume dots here, all right? So um, I'll get into the, what exactly Bookmap is showing you uh, here, uh, but uh, um, there was a customer that uh, had a question about this, so I wanna answer this. Um, about the the volume displayed here, uh, and um, and how how to um, uh, how to use it. Okay, it's a lot of different features for it. All right. So, um, in fact, I'm going to start taking off some data here just to simplify this. Okay, because um, and we're gonna we're gonna take basically all of the uh, uh, data off and just look at a candlestick chart in just a minute. But we're looking at volume here that traded on the historical best bid and offer. So let me go over here to studies configuration. Okay. And um, we'll go to volume dots here. Okay. Make sure it's selected. Uh, and I have it as pie display. You have the dot size here. Okay. It's a little big for me. I'm going to bring it down a little. Uh, and then the transparency you can also play with. All right. Uh, and then the clustering, all right? So I usually just leave it on the, um, if I click on restore here, uh, and then I just, let's just bring the dot size down. And that's usually just good enough for me. Um, I like the dot clustering on smart, but uh, let me briefly describe some of this, okay? Um, you can look at volume by time, okay? And then you, if you choose that, you're clustering here by time. And let's look at 15 minutes. Okay, so every single 15 minutes, there's gonna be a new dot. Okay, now note how historical best bid and offer, okay, uh, is here and the volume dot actually took place outside of that. That's because we're showing you the VWAP of this volume. All right, we're also, as you can see here, showing you in this pie display, the overall delta of the volume. Okay, so an aggressive market buy uh, is um, a, a green dot. Uh, an aggressive market sell is a red dot. Now, when so many transactions have taken place, we display it as the overall, and uh, and we give you it as one dot, um, and um, and then and then give you the understanding of who might be winning the battle here. You can see it's pretty even on the way up here, right? And you see sellers are starting to take control on the on the current dot that is forming at the moment. Anyway, some good stuff up here. We're going to get into it in just a minute. Uh, we already see kind of distribution pattern up above. Uh, and um, so that's by time. Okay, we can look at volume. Okay, if, uh, if I choose by volume, uh, you need to input, and we can just input it by hand here. Let's input 500. Let's input 5,000. Okay, every 5,000 transactions um, or uh, I shouldn't say transactions, uh, contracts, that trade, then uh, a dot will be painted. And you can see it gives you, it's on the VWAP and it's also on, um, it gives you the overall delta and, and, and shape of it. So it's not by time, it's by the number of contracts traded. Okay, so you can play around with those two. Now, uh, you can also have it on none, right? And none will just show every single transaction. Uh, and then there's by smart, okay? Now, smart, uh, is a combination of by volume and by time. So we're looking for flurries of activity and then we're kind of um, uh, consolidating those or clustering those uh, in a specific area by, by the volume and by the time. So um, there might be transactions that take place but they're less significant um, and uh, they will be kind of uh, vi just visually now uh, aggregated uh, into a bigger dot. All right, okay, any questions on volume? Uh, I wanted to get to that, um, and I, it was a, a question that I uh, wanted to get to right off the bat, uh, and um, uh, let me know. I mean, there's a minimum accountable uh, dot volume and countable trade size. These are other filters um, that are not by clustering. It's actually filtering out the volume in a, sp in a very specific way, All right? So, um, uh, I won't get into that right now, um, but um, uh, maybe uh, if, you, if you want, uh, let me know, and um, I'll get to it in just a minute, okay? So let's just go, go over what book map is showing you, because we're already seeing some good stuff here. The move up distribution pattern, and we can see sellers taking control here, all right? So uh, let me make sure I have my, yeah, okay, everything looks good. All right, 
let's put on the candlesticks and let's take off everything else here and volume volume bars will keep okay you can see we have a, a sub chart here this is cumulative volume delta but uh, I just want to show you what book map uh, is displaying here because uh, it's you know the chart looks really uh, noisy uh, in book map it's actually really simple data uh, it's, it's this candlestick chart is actually more complex uh, conceptually than what book map is showing Okay, because this is open, high, low, close of a specific time period. This is a five-minute candlestick chart, All right? And then to understand that, understand wicks, understand bodies, understand the patterns, etc., uh, is uh, is is more complex, uh, to be honest. Uh, and um, uh, this is a derivative of time and price and volume, uh, and it's just summed up. Uh, very neatly in four data points within five minutes. That's a problem because there's so much more information here that gives you no insight whatsoever to what's going on uh, in uh, with price. I mean, we can just look at this example right here. We see selling up here. Okay, this is this is this is telling you to go short. And uh, we opened here and we went down to to begin with. And as soon as you break here, you're you're going short, right? Well. This you can see that uh, that that didn't work out here. Okay, so this candlestick pattern up here, for example, is, is erroneous. Right, uh, the transparency that we need to see up here in these areas is the volume and the auction where where traders were bidding and offering. We also need to see exactly where they're transacting. We want to understand uh, the aggressor, how much volume traded up here. Uh, exactly where on this candlestick um, and um, uh, you know if it's a more aggressive buying well then I'm looking for you know an aggressive move to the upside all of that kind of information here is 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 not answered by looking at this candlestick chart even with the sub chart and vo volume down here it's still not answering the questions okay so let's turn on and I'm just going to start very slowly here because just Turning on the historical best bid and offer, we're already going to get a tremendous amount of insight here. Okay, we're going to get an understanding of microstructures, uh, and historical best bid and offer uh, allows that. Okay, so all it is 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 the the red line is historical best offer, green line is historical best bid. Okay, and uh, now we're starting to understand some of the structure here. What what kind of occurred up here? I mean, we see a nice return back to this little structural area here with this this little pullback here. Okay, we're probably going to see exhaustion here. They might even in the auction we might see a lot of activity here. Okay, bidders uh, here. Uh, they 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 really they want to buy at a higher level. Anyway, uh, we'll uh, answer that question in just a minute. Okay, so. Uh, looking at the, this uh, kind of structural, these structural little areas of consolidation and breakout and consolidation and breakout uh, gives us a lot of insight. And that's lost because in a candlestick chart, this is just aggregating that back and forth. Okay, so let's turn on the volume now. Okay, now we're understanding where the transactions are taking place. Okay, and we're, we're um, uh, be a able to... Uh, I really see a lot more information right now. So, for example, just this little area right here that we were focusing in on, okay, uh, this is telling you to go long. Okay, there, there's no question about it. And the reason being is, look at the aggressor here, okay, the uh, um, the aggressor pulling the market up out of the range here. We get a pullback to where it broke from. We see a nice move again up to the upside. And we see it break outside of this area with more aggressive buying. Okay, there's selling in here too, but it's mostly buying, pulling the market up. Okay, buyers are in control. We're looking for pullbacks to where we broke from or large areas of volume and transactions. Okay, high volume nodes, and we're looking for the aggressor to show up again. Okay, and they do. Okay, and we're, we we uh, see a trending uh, market here. And we see more volume. And more aggressive buying trade at higher highs. Okay, very indicative of a trend. And um, 
uh, this would give you that kind of insight at that area here. And we're just looking at the, the traded volume. Okay. Now, let me um, uh, zoom in here, and I want to go through something uh, pretty important uh, because uh, we go through this in our educational course. Uh, it's really about specific market phenomena that occur uh, in the order flow. Uh, and gaining gaining an understanding of really what's going on here in this market. So this, for example, here is these are the aggressive buyers. Okay. So as I zoom in, uh, note how I, I'm showing every single bit of of data here, and I'm starting to that this was kind of a, a big um, dot that had buyers and sellers in a pie display. But note how I zoom in and I break apart all that trade activity, and I can see exactly what's trading here. Okay, and we're down at the microsecond level. We can continue. It's unlimited zoom, basically. You know, we can go down to nanosecond level. Uh, now, we don't trade off of those times, but we can already start to see how, look at the patterns here of a kind of algorithmic activity, little flurries and clusters okay, that happen in a pattern. Here's three. Here's another three. Here's two, and this kind of matches. Looks like this algo trades two, uh, then three, and then three. Two, then three. Well, no, I, I guess uh, I guess it broke here the pattern, um, but uh, you'll see them, and um, uh, we can continue to zoom in, and we can see exactly what traded here. Okay, this this looks, and we can we can uh, use the data tip tool, and we can show that we have the date, the time, what was on the ask here, okay, and then the volume. So this is this is the market here, right? Historical best offer is the red line. Okay. Traders are here uh, providing liquidity, in this case, 33 contracts, okay. uh, and um, uh, they, want to, they want to be sellers here. Okay. And uh, the buyers here, they're, they're providing 14 contracts here okay. on the, on the um, historical best bid. Okay. Now, the transaction that you see here is, is a market buy. Okay. Someone hit the market buy button okay, for a volume of 10. Okay, so that's we we consider this the aggressor classification because uh, they crossed the spread, they paid up for it, they took liquidity, they didn't provide liquidity, they took it from the uh, from the best offer. Okay, and the, and, a, and a green dot paints. Okay, if we zoom out a little bit more and we see some selling, well, here here now there's a there's a better example of some algorithmic activity there in little clusters. All right, um, and um, uh, so they hit the market sell button here. OK. All right. So um, anyway, that's what we're showing you in Bookmap. And we're showing you every single and you can see the, the best bid and offer in the spreads. So a little bit of volatility occurred here at this at this very moment. OK, a little back and forth here. All right. Now, as I zoom out, OK, we, we can start to uh, piece this whole thing together and note how we we have just visually, OK, just graphically aggregated all this together. Okay, so we can see the move to the upside here. This phenomena here is usually how we break out of zones and areas, okay, trading areas. Uh, this is called a sweep of the limit order book. The aggressive buyers came in and they, they took liquidity at every single level here, okay, and they swept the book. Uh, any Anyone who wanted to sell up here, well, they, they got filled, okay. So, um, and that's a phenomenon that uh, you'll see again and again. And that's why you can see we trade here and we see more aggressive volume at higher highs because of the breakouts here and more volume and more aggressive buying at the higher areas. Okay, note here on these little areas on the pullbacks, this is a, uh, basically uh, showing exhaustion. Okay, no one's really interested in selling at some of these little pullback areas here. Okay, so basically what happens is, is the market still has the capability of price discovery to the upside. Okay, this is the kind of phenomena that matters in uh, uh, the, uh, uh, or understanding the order flow. Okay, who's in control and, uh, and how they're behaving. Okay, it's not about some sort of derivative or anything else. We just, we're, we're understanding the players and, uh, and their behavior. Okay, and what price might be worth at some of these levels. All right. Okay, now that's half of the picture 
is just the traded volume. Okay, it's very insightful, uh, and a lot of us are very familiar of looking at the volume. Okay? But um, let me take the candlesticks off at this point. All right. Now, the 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 other uh, half of what's going on here is what's going on outside of the transactions. Where are they bidding and offering? Okay, how is it going in the auction? To access that, usually what we do is we access that in the current market. Okay, so and uh, and the way you can see that is here in Bookmap, uh, is with the um, the dome. This is the current state of the market on the on the on the right side of uh, this um, this vertical white line. This is your your best bid and offer currently, and here's your last traded volume right here. Okay, this white number. Okay, there's it's an aggregate number as well for. Uh, uh, Anyway, I don't want to go over this feature at the moment, but uh, last traded volume is here. Um, the um, now the way we access the um, uh, the depth of market is in the in the um, uh, the dome here, and we can see la uh, where traders are layering in with uh, contracts and liquidity. They're providing liquidity. They want to be sellers at these areas up here. And they want to be buyers down here. Okay, this is the current auction. Current auction gives us a good snapshot of understanding uh, exactly now at this moment uh, where they're where they're bidding and offering. The majority of them, we see 90 contracts here. Okay, uh, we see up here, and this is well, I have full depth of market, so actually this is live up here. There's 124 contracts up here at, at 6319. All right, so uh, uh, we're getting a feel for where the sellers are lining up and where the buyers are lining up. And that is really insightful. The problem is, is when this data changes, it's lost. Uh, the current uh, snapshot is lost. We don't know uh, where they're, uh, where they previously were. What about the areas around it? What kind of interest did they show, et cetera. Okay. None of those questions are answered here looking at the current market. And that's where Bookmap uh, solves this problem really nicely. Okay. We take the data here in the dome uh, and uh, we turn it into a heat map. Okay, so high liquidity is uh, is bright white. So 63.19 is bright white. Other areas that are high liquidity are uh, a bit brighter or less uh, less bright than the highest area here, but you can still still see uh, where they're lining up. Okay, so you'll see this heat map change in this window here. All those changes are recorded on and then transposed onto the chart historically. Okay, so now we can start to understand their behavior in that auction. So, for example, these traders that were they were showing interest here on the sell side. Okay, but we're starting to read and look how the market's behaving. They're pulling their liquidity and 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 they're um, uh, they're placing it at higher levels. Okay, this is uh, this is bullish. Okay, sellers are, are less aggressive. They're pulling away from the market and they don't want to be uh, sellers here. They want to be sellers up here now. Okay, and the aggressive buyers are uh, are charging up, uh, you know, uh, lifting the offer up and toward, toward these areas of higher liquidity. As we zoom out, this is where you're really going to uh, be able to uh, start to understand the historical heat map and liquidity. Okay, so let's just go back and take a look at our example uh, that was over here. Okay, well we can see. I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on here, uh, but uh, we can see on the bid that they were bidding it up at this area here. Okay, we can see that the map is telling us that. Pretty aggressive on the sell side too, to be honest, uh, here and here. Uh, but the buyers uh, just they they overpowered them and uh, they took them on and they trade through that liquidity. Okay, or or potentially these guys pulled, and we can answer that question. Okay, we can click on the move tool, hover over this area, and zoom in quickly with my center mouse wheel, and I can answer this question of did these guys want to trade and did they trade? Okay, and the answer here is yes. Okay, we're trading right into high liquidity here. Okay. So there were 230 contracts here, and we see 183 just traded. Okay. And then we can see we dropped down to 47 contracts, uh, and then uh, and there's still uh, aggressive buyers are still trading in this area here. Okay, here they are. 
Okay, they're lifting the offer. They're they're sweeping the book higher into other areas. Okay, so these this is uh, this was a kind of a key area here. Okay, the uh, these aggressive uh, sellers here, you can see probably the same player provided liquidity up here, dropped it down, provided it here, and then you can see at this same moment he he dropped the liquidity, high liquidity down a couple of ticks. Okay, pretty pretty aggressive. Okay, so this guy wanted to sell. And uh, buyers took them on. See a, a little bit of spoofing type of action under, under here, okay, making a distinction between higher, uh, high long-term liquidity that stays in the book and trades, okay, like this guy definitely wanted to trade, uh, and um, uh, and then this kind of short-term high liquidity here that really doesn't ha it doesn't have intent to trade. It's fake liquidity. It's here to skew the limit order book to try to get price to move higher, okay? And um, anyway, we see this kind of phenomenon uh, happen uh, happen all the time, okay? And uh, the, the uh, result of that was, uh, you, it was in this area right here, as you can see, uh, pretty successful, okay? And got price to go higher. Anyway, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, I didn't even go over the dis distribution pattern up here that we saw. Uh, let's uh, zoom out a little bit here. Uh, but um, uh, we see a shift in the order flow at this area here. And uh, now we're starting to see more selling at a lower area. Okay. And we see uh, we don't make a higher high. And um, and we see uh, ah, there's still, there's still aggressive uh, buyers up here, but just not enough. Right. And the, the book uh, really gets thick up here in these areas here. Uh, and then the sellers start taking control. Uh, well, I mean, they hit it pretty hard here. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, right around this area here, they, they take control and, and move it to the downside. OK. Uh, and uh, we made a lower low. Right. So um, uh, anyway, the uh, the buyers are still engaged, though. They're, they're, they're right back in. And uh, we see the same kind of phenomena repeat again here. Okay. So it looks like buyers are starting to take control again at these areas. We need to come up to these swings up here uh, and uh, and see how this is uh, how this is behaving and how how they're behaving in the book. Okay. All right. Anyway, a lot of information there. Uh, it's time to go. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry, Carl. Uh, you had a question here. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Reach out to support uh, Carl on that. Um, and uh, they, they'll be able to help you. And I think uh, you might have to talk to, to John uh, as well at, uh, at JS Services. All right. Okay. Okay, great. All right, guys. Well, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you know, we, we're just touching on the, the very basics here. Uh, there's so much more uh, to look at. We have uh, an indicator subchart here. Uh, we have um, all sorts of different studies over here we also have automated trading strategies here you will need the one-click trading but um, uh, we have chase escape and execute strategies these strategies read imbalances in the book to uh, optimize your trading okay uh, they're algos and uh, and you can use that uh, uh, any way that uh, uh, you know you, um, you you choose uh let's see here only windows version uh, Jesus. Um, oh, um, no, regarding uh, JS service, I mean, you're going to get a quicker answer if you, if you contact support right now. Um, I, you know, I've got the, uh, that other webinar, so I, I've got to jump to that one. But, uh, if for those of you, uh, uh, you know, in trial or, or current customers, I'll see you in the next one. Okay. All right. Take care.